Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program PvP. I'm 4040 and today I'm going to be, uh, well, adjusting some of my ships and uh, flying to a new planet. Yay! But I'm getting ahead of myself. What I am going to do is show you guys what's been going on. Because it's been a little while since we recorded last time and... Uh, things have been afoot, so I need to show you what's been going on. So, as it stands currently at the moment, uh, in kind of scoring and working out who's uh, winning our little fight, Mod is currently winning the land grab kind of title, as he has got, uh, unopposed, he's got that planet there, he's got the red planet there, uh, I can't... I couldn't do that. There we go. There we go. So he's got Duna, and he's got one satellite around Duna's moon, Ike, and he's got one satellite around Duna itself. In fact, he's got several. Uh, so that means he has got two planets here, unopposed. Um, there's no military presence, it's just satellites. So that's... So he's he's got a score of two unopposed. And also, if we flick to here... There we go, and zoom in. This is Eve. Focus on Eve. There we go. Now, on Eve, he's got, again, one on its moon, and two in orbit? Yes, two in orbit around the planet. So, again, unopposed, non-military presence. So, he's got four kind of planets. As opposed to me and Nightshades, if I zoom on Kerbin, we have been focusing on our, our own personal fights, around Kerbin and its moons. Uh, as it stands, I have full military control currently uh, around Minmus because I've destroyed all of Nightshade's combat vessels and we've all got lots of satellites everywhere. So the satellite part uh, is contested so nobody's actually got satellite primary control. Uh, the next step up from pri satellite primary control is um, if anybody's landed on the surface and whether that's contested or not. And then the last one, the, the biggest step is do they have a military presence in orbit or on the ground and is it contested? I have a military presence and it is currently uncontested as I blew up lots of his ships. There are uh, there's a few worker bumpy delivery system there, uh, but that is literally just the pod. Uh, it's like an emergency lifeboat. So I am winning the military uh, military fight around Mimus. If we scroll to the Mun, there is Nightshade has one um, interceptor. I have one interceptor which is there there you go I have one interceptor so we both have an interceptor around the moon and I have one damage interceptor as well which can't move anywhere which is kind of a stationary gun which meh it's, it's not going to do anything so we are we are fully contested here we've all got satellites and me and Nightshade both have fully functioning combat vessels that are currently having a good old scrap so nobody has full control of the moon uh, mutual denial. And then we flick to Kerbin, and this is where some interesting developments have been going on. Now, <clears throat> around uh, here, I believe that I have, uh, I do have a vessel. Uh, where have you gone? Uh, I have got a lot of satellites. I think everybody has got satellites around here. And there you go, I have the CIP Tsunami, uh, which is the only corporation-based, the only corporation-based military vessel in an orbit around Kerbin. Or at least that was until recently. Now, in the last turn, uh, the, the Northern Coalition, who are, uh, they're not corporation-based, they are a collection of governments, uh, from the north of the planet of Kerbin. Uh, if I can find where the KSP, send, KSP is... Uh, right, so... I launch from... down... Focus Kerbin, okay. 
Let's find where I launch from. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Focus on Kerbin. Not that bit. Not that bit. Am I just being derpy? I am being derpy. I'm looking in the wrong bit. Okay. So, this is the bit that we launch from here. In fact, a little bay. Yeah, where all these debris and stuff off. That's that's where we launch from. Okay. Uh, the Northern Coalition is actually the opposite side of the planet. Is this kind of mostly large, largely occupied landmass here, and it kind of swirls all the way around. So it's maybe kind of a little bit like the size of Russia, maybe a bit bigger. But that's the Northern Coalition, and uh, recently, Northern Coalition have been paying me to try and peacekeep in space. And I've kind of been failing because I've been unable to neutralise or at least slow down or stop Nightshade from attacking me. He has yet to attack uh, uh, Tuxedo's Industries, which is run by Mod, but Tuxedo's Industries has remained stubbornly neutral throughout the entire conflict which uh, I'm not sure I'd like Tuxedo's Industries to take my side and help me so we know I'm the one who's bleeding for him but on the other hand he is a corporation and he's not contracted to actually engage in military operations well it turns out that the Northern Coalition all this time while they were contracting me have been building up their own Space Force now this ring here which I'm circling uh, is well out of reach of any of my ships because um, I need to be within 30 kilometers to be able to uh, zoom to another ship and that's 472 that's uh, eight, yeah they're, they're hundreds of kilometers out so they've literally parked themselves in their dead zones and nobody can look at them which is a bit odd but in secret development these ships ha have been developed and launched and you've got one two, three, four ships and what looks like some kind of base station and they've all got code names as well so we've got no clue whatsoever what they are and I'm a bit nervous about getting too close to them just in case they take that as hostile action. Unfortunately as they have launched, uh, as they are a government as well, they do have the ability to rather control the Senate who is what gives me the powers to be a peacekeeper. The Senate is what basically tells us what is legal and what isn't legal. Of course the Senate at the moment has no way to enforce its actions until now. Now that there is a, uh, what looks like a fairly sizable fleet in orbit uh, in a orbit around Kerbin, the North Coalition have got the ability to enforce their own Senate's decisions and the recent Senate decision is that Kerbin is now a no-fire zone which means that nobody, unless you want to incur the wrath of the fleet in orbit, is allowed to shoot or aggressively engage or accidentally discharge, I'm looking at you Nightjade, uh, any kind of weapons, weapon systems or anything like that. I mean, accidents happen, an accident is an accident if you accidentally collide with somebody's stuff because you damage your own ship. But accidents are really hard to happen because space is big and it's difficult. Uh, to accidentally on purpose ram somebody. Um, so, if anybody engages in any kind of combat around Kerbin, it looks like the uh, Northern Coalition fleet will step in and um, neutralize the vessels. Now, they've quoted that this is because uh, space debris from a lot of the fights that were happening around Kerbin have been dropping into the atmosphere in sizable enough chunks to damage property on the ground and to harm the uh, atmosphere because there's some, you know, some quite nasty chemicals used in uh, space rocket fuel and stuff, uh, especially with the nuclear engines. Uh, and they're a bit annoyed that nuclear fallout is dropping onto habitated uh, zones and areas and cities and stuff. So they have decided that to safeguard the people of Kerbin, which you know is understandable. They have launched a fleet and are stopping anybody fighting in orbit. Well, I say stopping. I suspect if you have a fight in orbit, they'll be they'll you still get your strike off because they can't act until you actually fire, and by then they can't stop you. But they will extinguish your fleet if uh, if it survives the conflict. So, <coughs> yeah, potentially they might be out for blood and be killing people. 
but I'm uh, interested in finding out what Nightshades and uh, uh, Mods, uh, which is Tuxedo's Industries, actually take of this. Are they going to take this line down? Will Nightshade Industries, who are kind of the bad guys in all of this, ish, they're the ones that are always accidentally on purpose shooting at people anyway, and they're the ones that always instigate a fight, so, you know, they might not take too kindly to the Northern Coalition throwing their weight around in space. Reason being is that the Northern Coalition is just a governmental thing. It's it's just a government. It's you know they they can't tell you who they want to police. And right now they've decided that they're going to police the airspace around Kerbin, which is hmm, uh, interesting. I'm just going to say the word interesting. I don't know what the other guy's going to do, but today's plan I think is for me to kind of. Uh, is to reduce mods lead on the mine, uh, land grab. Now, I want to go to this planet here. This is Eve. I'd like to send a spaceship which can do stuff to planet to, to Eve. And I'd also like to send a lander onto the planet because that is the next step from just having unmanned satellites. And I was thinking, well, why why have unmanned satellites on the lander when I can send a military ship? Because that is the biggest, that's, that's the, the, the biggest form of control that you can have over a planet, is having a military presence. And I was thinking, well, I have no satellites in orbit around this body, so the only ship that could get out here in one go, be a military presence, and launch a lander, and launch satellites, would be... The capital class ship Leviathan. So, today's episode, I am going to uh, go back here. I'm going to see if I can modify Leviathan to get her to do this mission. Now, I don't actually know if Leviathan has enough umph, enough delta V, <coughs> to get to Eve. If she doesn't, there, we've got a bit of a problem, and I've got a capital ship drifting about in space, but I think I will be able to cope with that. So let's load the Leviathan. There we go. It's just loading, loading, loading. Oh, good old KSB. Still running on 32 bit. Unfortunately, so yeah, my, my nice big fat computer with all of its all of its memory sticks and dual cores, they're just, it's not being utilised. Okay, so here it is. This is the Leviathan. Now last time we launched this we had quite a few problems with the launch, but what I want to do is take off this satellite and I want to replace it with, let's, actually let's just get rid of it. There we go. So we got rid of that satellite, so now I'm going to rename this the Leviathan 2, and I'm going to tell it to save. So now, if we have a bug or a glitch, then it should be fine. Now what I want to do is put a small lander on here. Now, uh, let's have a looky-looky. I'd like it to be manned. Now we have got a couple of options. We've got this... Oop. No, <laughs> didn't click that, I clicked this. There you go. Now this is quite a large option. And landers can quite be be quite big, it might be a bit much. Now we have got the super small lander can, which might work. So uh so we've got the little lander can, or we've got the two man lander can, which again is quite big and Hmm. Oh, we've got three man, so... Which one should I go for? Uh, I think I'm going to go for a small one, uh, just on an effort not to unbalance the ship. So for the time being, that's what we're going to go for. And spin it around. There you go. Put it on that decoupler. Now, that's, that's not how it's going to be launched, don't worry about this. I need to make sure that's the top, this is the bottom. Now, 
what I'd like to do is actually not mount it sideways, um, just so it's got a little bit of clearance. Uh, let's add some proportion on here. Uh, we're going to need a relatively small fuel tank. Come on. You know you want to. Come on. Make silly noises and click. I got snapped by my help. Okay, um, I'm going to build this, it's, KSPC seems to be having a bit of a brain fart coming out of that, so I'm going to literally just stick this on the butt end of one of the engines, because, yay. So, let's make sure this is the right round. There we go, okay, so, uh, wait, uh, this is going to be landing on EVE. Which means that uh, that's got 1900, that's got 25. That's quite snug. That's quite small. What about this one? That's quite big. Okay. Um, let's put fuel tank on. Fuel tank or that fuel tank? No, that's definitely that fuel tank. That's just. Oop. Didn't mean to do that. What have I changed? Uh, I don't just put, put you there. Okay. So, uh, let's go put a small fuel tank and just, just put it on there. Just, just for the sake of putting it on there. And there we go. And then we're going to want to put some engines. Now, these have got a power of 20, but they've got an ISP of 300, which is not brilliant. To be frank, uh, let's see what fl what new flat end we've got. This thing, but I think this thing is massive. Yeah, that's that. That's a bit big. Uh, okay. So let's put some smaller engines on. I think that's my best choice. I don't think there is a smaller engine, or f there is a flat engine, but okay. So let's put. I reckon three. Three I do. Reason being is I don't think we only need uh, these to um, basically help us to de orbit. Is that going to block the door? That is going to block the door. Okay. Nope. Didn't mean to click you. There you go. Oh no! Still didn't mean to click you. Damn it! <laughs> there you go. Come on, work, work. Let's change that to three, and hopefully that'll have moved it enough to. Yes, yeah, so that's off to the side. Brilliant. Uh, the atmosphere on the planet we're landing on is really, really thick, so I don't think I'm going to need much fuel. I just need enough fuel to deorbit from wherever I end up, which could be potentially quite far. But what this is going to need is parachutes and landing legs and a smidgen of RCS just to get me away from this so uh, let's put one of these on uh, we only need one that's right we only need one also quite laggy there you go so put one of them on there which means that we can help control it uh, that's got its own reaction wheels we don't need we don't really need that I'm gonna put Four of these on, and I'm gonna try and that should work. You only need you only need them, I think. Yeah. Let's see if I can budge them off a bit. Nope. 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 Oh no, they're just not working. Okay. Um, two, three, four. Why you not work? There you go. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to need some landing legs, uh, which is and batteries. I'm going to put battery on. Only one. Only need one. Um. I'm not quite sure how tall this is going to be. 
gonna put this battery there for the time being. And I think I'm gonna put two of these guys just on its side, so you've got some power generation. off-center but oh the engine's in the way that's why that would be why okay no problems yes okay um in fact let's be a bit safer and move it here so I think that's away from pretty much all of the engines yes okay uh so uh, let's go to we're gonna definitely gonna need some landing legs <laughs> okay sidetracked landing legs but I would like some solar panels Of here, I'm gonna want two because that would be fairly no. Ah, stop it. Okay, <laughs> I'm dealing with lag issues here. Make funny noises. Oh, come on, just click. Jeez, okay. One, there you go. And two, and click. Okay, so solar panels, check. Battery, check. Nuclear power generation, check. Uh, feet, feet is. Uh, so let's have a look what kind of feet we want. Hmm. all feet. Wow, those are huge. What else we got? Those are huge too! Are there any small ones? Aha! Little ones. Okay, and we're gonna go for four. And. In fact, let's put them up here and out of the way. Come on. Okay, and uh, do, and do, and do. There we go. I'm hoping this will work. Now, uh, we've got four legs for to cushion, and the last thing, because of the atmosphere the planet we're coming to is so thick. Uh, we're going to need to add parachutes. And I don't think we need many parachutes either, because this is literally a one way trip. I don't have to do a regularly mounted parachute because this is going to be sticking out somewhat from the ship. Uh, but I only have two. Two should be good. Uh, that's it. So we've got two parachutes. We've got some thrusters to help us <coughs> get out of orbit. Uh, and we should be able to land.
Hi everybody and welcome back. I have uh, just finished tweaking my little lander. I've moved the battery pack around, added some RCS and strutted it up to hell and back again. Uh, and well, as you can hear the music in the background, which is being jerky, and I'm smoothly scrolling the mouse, yet it's jerking. We're getting a lot of lag even just in the construction area. So I think that we're going to have lots of fun launching this. So I'm going to exit. And I'm going to launch it uh, from the um, launch pad, not from the VAB. Reason being is it seems to glitch the computer less doing it that way round, and I I don't know why. There must be something in the code that that forces it to happen. Let's go to the launch pad. Let's uh, Leviathan two, which should have three. Yes, it does. Oh, no available. Crew. Okay, close. There are not many available crew. I'm gonna have to um hire hire a lot of people. There we go. Close. Now it's not surprising, there are quite a lot of ships in orbit, uh, including Yancy, Nightshade, and uh, Team Tux uh, Tuxedo's Industries, yeah, Vizen 2. And we're going to want people with lots of courage, and hopefully not much stupidity. Oh, lots of courage and stupidity. Lots of courage and a bit of stupidity. And an average amount of courage and an average amount of stupidity. I think that's the best we're going to get. Uh, launch. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, last time I tried launching this, it took four goes and three hours to get this just into orbit around Kerbin because it uh, has fun trying not to spaz the hell out. So, yeah, we're going to have to watch out for that. There we go, just loading in, there's the, uh... Ah, there we are. <laughs> Come on, give me a picture. You know you can do it. <coughs> I'm just hoping that adding that little thing, the little lander, isn't asking too much of it. I don't want it to die horribly. Right, that can go away. I'm going to wait for the physics to load. And hopefully it'll be rock steady. Uh, let's go to the orbital map. And... Oh, wow. I mean, it's not even rendering the thing at the moment. And it's still... Going a bit mental. Come on. Now, to go inwards, we actually need to launch different direction. And so what I'm going to do... Set Eve as my target. <coughs> and then come back... Oh, I heard an explosion. What happened? No! Oh, no. What? Uh, okay, it looked like it forgot... It looks like it forgot to, um render the strut connectors, or at least calculate them holding on, because I didn't eject that. I just let go. Okay, uh, vert light, vert launch. Yeah, I, di I didn't want to sit through that entire explosion crash, because that can cause my computer to crash, as it goes crazy. <laughs> I don't know why it did that. Come on, computer, I'm not asking much of you. Well, I am, actually. It's only a 32-bit game, and this is kind of the limit of what my computer can cope with. Go, 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 launch, launch, launch. Yeah, look at that. Launching, launching. Okay, I'll turn three throttle on just for the time being. To be honest, I don't really need that. 
So guys, as this is launching, and I'm really hoping I've got all the settings right, what I'm going to do is bring you guys back in once I have reached orbit successfully. Uh, you've seen this launch before uh, in my previous videos, and there's not really much else to look at, so... Uh, bar bugs, bits falling off, and all kinds of crazy stuff happening, I shall see you... on... in orbit! Thank you very much for watching. I have been 4040 and this has been Kerbal Space Program PvP. Tune in next time for my trip, or at least my I tried to get my ship to Eve. And we're going to see how that works out and see if I manage to land my little guy on the surface of the planet. And if you've enjoyed this, please slack that like button. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the selection box. And I do have Facebook and Twitter, which are going to be linked below, if you've got any comments that uh, YouTube is not letting you post. Alright, I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching. Bye now.